Right now you're watching me through Rode's Streamer X 4K capture card XLR audio interface recorded into OBS. And right now you're watching me through that same mouthful of information that I said recorded into Ecamm Live. And now you're seeing me again recorded directly to my camera's internal memory card and there has been no color correction, no anything applied to any of this footage. It's just the raw footage from all of these three sources. Now the source of this video is I made a video all about the Streamer X and in that the footage just looked a little too choppy and a little too laggy. So here's an example from that video of what the footage looked like recording into Ecamm Live. And I think my biggest mistake was recording at 24 frames per second, which is what I normally do. And even though Ecamm is equipped with it, this was the result that I got. But I don't think that that was just the Streamer X because later in the video, when I compared it to the Camlink 4K and the ATEM Mini Extreme Pro ISO, the results were the same. So the fact that I had the same results across different capture cards means that it, it couldn't be the one interface. It had to be something in the software or something in my computer. I honestly would have been okay with it for a live stream or a video call, especially like live streaming in 4K is tough. I thought it looked fine for that. But for the highest quality you could get recording and not streaming, it definitely needed to look a little bit better. So I have done some investigation. I've done a little bit of research. I've tried to find my mistakes that I made. And I think I have something that can help in both OBS and Ecamm Live. These are not the definitive settings for the situation at all, but they're ones that I have found that do work. Please, if you have any advice or any tips or you wanna share your settings, please feel free to do that because I think that will be really helpful for everybody. So right now I'm recording into my M1 Max MacBook Pro and I'm recording simultaneously to Ecamm and OBS. So it has both applications open. And the good news is these settings actually work on the M1 Mac Mini, my base model M1 Mac Mini, the cheapest, least powerful, oldest Apple M1 computer that there is. These settings work there too. The reason I'm not recording the full video there is because I don't have the hard drive space on that computer to record two full 4K raw unedited videos. So that's why I'm using the MacBook for that. But I think the reason that I didn't notice the lagginess in the video so much while I was editing it was because I did get a lot of lag and a lot of choppiness on the M1 Mac mini at first. So I switched to my MacBook, it looked so much better, I was happy, I made my video, and then, especially after it was uploaded to YouTube, it didn't look as good as it should have. Fortunately, not only does it look better on the M1 Max MacBook Pro, but it also now with these settings works better on the M1 Mac Mini. In fact, I'll throw in an example right here so you can see that. This footage that you're looking at right now is being recorded into my base model M1 Mac Mini. This is Ecamm Live. And this right here is OBS all through the base model M1 Mac Mini. And I'll just keep switching between these throughout this little segment here. The thing about this computer is I bought it in 2021, New Year's Day of 2021, and it is the cheapest M1 Mac computer pretty much ever because it only has 256 gigs of hard drive and eight gigs of RAM, but it is a pretty impressive computer. So point being, if you're using any M series Apple computer with the Rode Streamer X, you should be able to get at least this level of quality, if not better, because your computer is more powerful. So I'm using the same settings that I used on the MacBook Pro, just with the Mac mini. And again, the only reason I'm not recording the whole video in this, just to prove that it's possible, is because I'm running out of hard drive space. So uh, that's just a very practical limitation of the tiny hard drive space on a two and a half year old computer. The biggest mistake that I made was recording at 24 frames per second, which I thought would be fine. And especially Ecamm Live has an option for 24 frames per second. But I think that was the ultimate mistake that I made. And that was really pointed out when I started poking around in OBS. And I realized OBS doesn't even really have, they have 24 frames per second, sort of, but they don't have a 23.98, which is the most common like North American NTSC signal that there is. It just goes straight to 30 or 29.98. And once I switched over to that from my camera into everything, that immediately helped. And then I changed a few other settings that helped along the way. So first and foremost, I went from 24 frames per second to 30 frames per second. That helped a lot. And then in Ecamm Live, here's my you know infinite mirror of Ecamm Live right now. You can see I have stream size set to 4K, 2160p, 16 by nine and 30 frames per second. And then I also did high quality video mode just to enable the highest quality possible. And then the other thing that I changed was over here in my camera effects panel. As you can see, I don't have any picture settings adjusted, but I do have this one right here that says use max resolution 4K. So for Ecamm Live, that's pretty much it. 
Now for OBS, which now the picture in the corner looks different because I recorded Ecamm settings with Ecamm and now that now you're seeing OBS record OBS's settings. OBS is a much trickier program to work with, but I was able to get better results faster with OBS. So the things that I changed was I put the recording quality to indistinguishable. It's one down from the maximum, but the maximum has tremendously large file sizes and records to like different formats. So this seems to work well. Recorded with QuickTime because that's most compatible on a Mac. I'm using the Apple H.264 hardware encoder. And then of course for video, I made sure to go in and actually select not just a preset or not just the highest quality setting, but 3840 by 2160 full 4K resolution, and then made sure to put 30 frames per second as my value there. And those settings have seemed to work pretty well. I will say though, especially with OBS on the Mac mini, if I go back into my output settings, if I change this option from hardware encoder to the software encoder that creates larger file sizes, it seemed like that worked a little bit better on the Mac mini that has eight gigabytes of RAM. It was pretty indistinguishable, but it just seemed like that was getting better results. So I would recommend if you're using a Mac, an M1 Mac, to maybe bounce around between those two settings and see what ends up looking the best for you. So hopefully that helps if you're using the Streamer X or honestly maybe any capture card to get smoother video quality in this software and with this equipment. 30 frames per second really does seem to be a key. I think the thing that I was so excited about with the Streamer X, one of the things was that it seemed like, man, this can just be like plug and play. Like you get this, you plug it in, you're done, and it's going to look good. And that's what I did. I got mine, I was using it, and it looked so much better than what I was using before that I was really happy with it. But when you compare it to internal, like this footage right here that's coming from the camera's memory card to then what looked like a pretty good live stream, even though it was an upgrade in my streaming capture card quality, it was a downgrade in the video production quality. And unfortunately, I think that's just like, I think that's just part of it. I don't know that it's currently possible for there to be a capture card that's going to give amazing results, plug and play to everybody, probably because there's so many variables with computers and software and settings and har hardware and just all that stuff. So even though this is a plug and play and consumer friendly device, you probably do still need to spend some time poking around in settings. And that's true for probably most capture cards. Maybe one day we'll just have plug and play. Maybe we'll figure out a way to do 24 frames per second smoothly. But until then, I hope this was helpful to get you at least up and running in a way that looks good and of course, sounds good.